The hype of the Steam Deck isn't over, and I completely understand why, because as I'm making this video a lot of people want to have one of these devices. And if you're thinking of pre-ordering one, there are some things you need to know. But in this video I want to talk about the emulation performance of the Steam Deck, because this device is absolutely a beast, and when you're looking how much you need to pay for it and the value you're going to get, it's an imperfect balance if you ask me. If you want to play your old school 16-bit games or you want to get some more demanding stuff, and that is amazing because a lot of stuff that couldn't run on let's say cheap devices it runs very well on the Steam Deck. But how far can you push it and is this thing actually worth your money? That is what I wanted to talk about with you today. But okay, so the Steam Deck is absolutely a beast when it comes in size and what you can do with it. So in this video I want to mainly focus on the emulation and what we can do. Because playing games on the go is pretty damn awesome, but I will talk about it in my main review when I have my conclusion, what I think of it. But now, having this device quite early because I went to the Scalper Jungle to get myself one. But was it worth it? I really have a lot of great handhelds in my collection that can play sometimes even up to PlayStation 1 and even some Sega Dreamcast. But this beast of a device can even play more. But what can it play more? Because you're paying around 4 times the money that you're paying for a typical Ambernic product like an RG351V. So as I'm making this video, I've noticed that there is still a lot of development around the Steam Deck. And even as I'm making new videos, there are new applications released or updated that have like new possibilities or adding emulators and games to this that we're going to talk about today. I really love the Steam Deck for what it is, it's absolutely a beast and yeah, when it comes to comfortability, I think it's a really comfortable handheld to play. This Spide is a really big handheld to hold in your hands, but also when it comes to the weight, it's not a big problem. The first part of the video I basically wanted to add the emulators and configure everything by myself, but I can tell you it's going to be a nightmare if you want to do this. It will cost you like many hours to set everything up, and even like me if you're going to get a lot of stuff configured you will find a lot of weird issues with the Steam gaming mode. But I think it was a week or so, after that I was even not like ready publishing my video, like I just wanted to give me my honest opinion about it. I've noticed like a lot of people were like messing around with special software like EmuDeck to get everything working and that was something of a mind-blowing experience because if you're using EmuDeck absolutely everything becomes so much easier and even as I was making this video they are still improving and making everything super easy to do so when a lot of people will get your Steam Deck everything is going to be easy peasy lemon squeezing and setting everything up with the Steam Deck in combination with gaming mode and some other applications. Okay, but EmuDeck itself works absolutely amazing. Because if you want to implement, like say, your games with all the thumbnails to your Steam Deck gaming mode, it's going to be a nightmare adding everything. And this program makes it so easy, it's almost like double click and go. Of course, it's going to be more difficult. There will be some tutorials out there on the YouTube, so I'm not going to bother you like with a quick tutorial inside this video, because again, there are like tutorials out there. But what you need to do is download your needed applications, get yourself some free space on your device itself or an SD card. I recommend getting a 256 gigabyte or bigger because some of the files, especially if you want to get into PlayStation 2 emulation, it's going to be like a lot demanding. But then everything has been set up and what you need to do is drag and drop everything in your needed files. For example, the ROMs, stuff like that, and you're ready to go. And when everything is done, you can basically like boot up your Steam OS and you can implement all of your games there. Take consideration I did a quick like say loading everything up you do see some double thumbnail because you do have games that are like noticed by the program like Daytona for example but you have the Dreamcast and you got some different version out there but it will give you the same thumbnail a little bit of a bummer so you need to mess around with it a lot to get everything nice looking but another thing you can do if you don't want to use it there's also another option. So with EmuDeck it comes including Emulation Station and what you can do with Emulation Station is just a cool layout that has a quick overview of every single game you want to add. And here you have like a quick menu, if you don't want to have all the hassle you can just basically boot this thing up and you can play all of your games like this. So that is even more convenient if you ask me because if you're going to like add 4 500 games to your list it's going to be like quite a big mess. And this makes it more, let's say, clean and simple to find your games. Another not really demanding game, but I just really love this game. By the way, I love the soundtrack. 
I've played this game so much as a child, like absolutely crazy amount of time spent on this game. I love pinball, but this game is so fun. Another thing I love about it is that they're using the old school filter, like you're still actually playing on the Nixale Game Boy. And also the side banners are amazing, cool. are just freaking awesome. But you can see like with the not really, like the basic games it only draws around 7 watts. Alright guys, so next up let's play some 16 bit. I did notice like they didn't configure the analog stick for the people who just want to play with analog stick, so it's not a big of a deal, but I just want to point it out. So it also use up around 7 watts, what I love about these old school games. It will only use a lot of power, so you can play a lot and very long. My battery life is at 57%. I'm having like 3 hour plus to play. So that's quite a lot. And the music on these two tiny speakers on the Steam Deck are amazing. Alright, so let's play some Sega 2D Twix. Such a weird game to be honest. But not a really bad game. I always grew up with Tekken, so I basically skipped the franchise Virtual Fighter. I know, it's bad. It's bad of mine. I'm a big fan of fighting games, but I just skipped this. Recently I did play it on my Sega Saturn and I personally really love part 2 with the system or series. But it was of course not on the Sega 32X. And I got my ass whooped like always. Yep. Yeah, just punch me in the face, whatever. Ooh, did you see that move? Mm -mm. Quacha! Big big bitches. Yeah, you can see like it goes to 8 watts again. Nothing really special. So where we have like these cheap handhelds from China, we have a lot of struggles. Of course, it depends how you will set up the Steam Deck and what kind of emulator you're going to use. So you can see like the analog stick does work with this game. Oh, by the way, I'm a big noob, a killer instinct. I have no idea what I'm doing here. All right, that uh, didn't go well. I'm like Chun Li, you know. GG win, absolutely. So this game always gives me so much trouble when it comes to, let's say, emulation on cheap devices. But when you're going to get a beefy device like in Steam Deck, it will run just fine without any hassle. Okay, so next up, system like Sega Saturn. You do see them more often now on cheap devices, but like a Steam Deck, you can play basically without any hassle. We'll try a couple of games, or maybe one game, and later on I will do some extended testing. And I just wanted to see how this runs. Ooh, some minor hiccups, but... I was just really curious how a couple of games will run on the Sega Saturn. But 
somehow I do miss some audio effects on this. It's a little bit of a bummer if you ask me. And of course crashing like always. I really suck at this game. I did play the Dreamcast version and I think that game is, let's say, more fun. Because I can actually play it. So let's try another one. We'll see if we will have any issues here. So the idea behind Sonic Air, it's quite interesting, but I never liked this game. It's such a weird experience. I'm more like Sonic the Hedgehog, it needs to be in a two-dimensional game and you just need to run. Okay, so we need to use the D-pad. We do have sound effect and music in this game. Alright, so next up, let's try some PlayStation Portable. You're not afraid of more. You should have. You can fly, fly like a little angel. Okay, so basically this is the first game that I ever bought for my PlayStation Portable. Fired up. It reminds me so much as like I think the game was Twist on Metal, yeah. So another game I played a lot on the PlayStation One. So this game is such a fun, such a fun memory to play. Of course, the ultimate landmark is God of War. Personally, I really love this game. We had so many issues. This game was basically unplayable on most devices. I mean, I, call, I don't mean like the most devices, like a an, an normal PSP emulator from Embernic. They had a lot of issues, or you need to put in a lot of tweaks. But this game runs just fine, as you can see. It pulls around 9.3, 9.4 watts, 9.6 from the battery. 9.7, 9.8. But of course, there's more than many game. Slice and dice, slice and dice. That is what the court of war is about. Slice and dice, slice and dice. With everybody who is naughty. Mm -mm -mm. You are naughty too. But I think when you're looking at the Steam Deck, I think the most exciting thing is that we can actually play some PlayStation 2 games. A lot of devices don't even have this option or you need to have like a very expensive phone or handheld that has the options too. And with a device like this, we finally have the options to do that. And when it comes to emulation performance, it's pretty damn good. What are you looking at, Fuzzhead? You're talking to me, Fuzzhead. Well, look at your own face. You look like a Fuzzhead. <laughs> I just want to give you an idea how long the loaner times are. They are not significant, let's say, shorter by the... 
and just use both the D-pad and the analog stick. I messed up. I'm always finding this such a weird game, like the graphics and how it plays. I'm almost getting the feeling I'm in automatic drifting mode or something like that. I'm not particularly I hate this game or something, but I, I never played it that much. I kind of appreciate it, like, of the way how it looks, how unique it is. So besides PlayStation Portable and PlayStation 2, we can also play some GameCube and Wii games on this device. Pretty damn awesome. Take consideration as I'm making this video, it's still an early phase. But in other words, this thing has the option to play GameCube and I think it's pretty damn awesome. games and when you're going to be upscaling this and playing this on a steam deck it is such an amazing experience But if you want to go old school with PlayStation 1, that is of course possible with the Steam Deck. And because of the power of the device, we can even upscale it in better resolutions or higher resolutions. So it looks even better than your typical Ambernic handheld. And I think if you love PlayStation, just like I do, I think this is such a cool experience. And it will give you a little bit extra, especially when you're looking at the way how it looks. And more like the graphical and when it upscaled on this tiny display, it looks amazing. Okay guys, so when it comes to the Steam Deck, I think this thing has so much to offer, especially when you're looking at the price. Depending what kind of model you're buying, the one you're seeing here is the 5 on 12 GB, so it's the most expensive one. But you also can get yourself a 64 GB and slap yourself a 512 GB SD card in it or a less than 256 GB and fill this thing up with retro games. So we have like this emulation beast with you. Yeah, of course the size is completely different compared with other handhelds and you're paying like four times the money for like compared with an Embernic, but it has so much more to offer. I didn't show any Xbox Classic or PlayStation 3 because I think it's not really worth picking up and looking at it because those systems will not run perfectly and it is no point of adding and playing it. Let me know in the comments what do you think of the Steam Deck? Would you consider buying it or picking it up later on? Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family and it would be great to see you in the next video.